So if you were a trans woman who was then uh, now competing as a woman, had been, uh, let's say, on the swim team, uh, originally accepted as a man, but now competing as a woman, I think sure. there are people who would have said, hey, that's that's cheating. You mm -hmm. have an advantage. You're stronger. Right. You have testosterone. You're faster than the women. This is a version of cheating. And I think a conversation around sports and trans people in sports is often around this idea that it's unfair and it shouldn't Absolutely. be allowed. Uh, there's been lots of studies, and I've done some reporting on this, of um, at measuring sort of every facet of, of, of athletes. But I'd love for you to talk a little bit about why this is what people focus on. Because my sense is, that it's not just about the cheating, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Your sense is absolutely correct. When we get these conversations about trans women and trans girls in sports, people always bring up fairness and cheating. And the reality is that this is often a ton of bigotry masked in a conversation around fairness, right? There are absolutely biological differences between people's bodies, and that is complex, but it is, it, is, it is weaponized against trans women in a way that is not only incorrect scientifically, but also just transphobic. Um, it, to me, and, and I think in much of the research, falls also under the policing of women's bodies, especially black and brown women's bodies in sport. And we see this with Serena Williams, we see this with Katra Semenya, we see this with literally any you know black or brown woman in sport, trans or not, there is an immense amount of policing of that person's body, um, especially with regards to their femininity or their perceived masculinity, their muscle. Musculature. Um, and I think that there's so much within that that we're not addressing when we talk about these conversations with trans women.